Man, Thursday Night Football really messes with my schedule. Hey guys, what is up? JDOZ back here again with another game preview. This time, we're previewing the Rams game. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start straight away with the injury report. And let's start off with the Rams. They have a lot of players on the injury report. All of them have now participated as of Tuesday's practice. And... A lot of them are starters, and a couple of them are stars. So let's start off with their starting linebacker, Mark Barron. He's battling an ankle injury. He did not participate. Uh, Dominic Easley, edge rusher. Uh, Jojo Natson, backup wide receiver. And two of their biggest pieces on defense, besides for Aaron Donald, Marcus Peters and Akeed Tlaib did not participate. And their kicker, Greg Zerline, is on here as well. So... The biggest names, of course, Peters and Tlaib. Huge news. So what I've heard, Tlaib is indefinitely out. Marcus Peters, game time decision. If they're both out, I think the I think Cousins will tear them apart. There, not many teams can cover uh, Thielen and Diggs with their number one corners. And I don't think they'll be able to do it with their number three and four. So this will be a long, long day. You know, at least on paper, you know the Bills game. <laughs> Uh, but I think Thielen and Diggs will have a huge game. And since one of them will be out, either, either way, I think Thielen will be just fine. If if uh, Peters is healthy, I would imagine he would shadow Diggs. And then that would be tough news for Diggs. But I think he would still do fine on an injured, roughed up Marcus Peters. Uh, so either way, our passing game should be okay if we can block up front. Uh, going to the Vikings, and it's a longer list. But a lot more guys, a little bit dinged up, but should play. So, of the three, of three players on this list that are probably already ruled out, and that is Marcus Sherrills, of course, Everson Griffin, and Riley Reef did not participate on Tuesday as well. Uh, Reef's a little bit uh, hit or miss there. Uh, we don't know how severe of a foot injury he, he has. If his play against the Bills, any indication of it. He maybe should sit out. I don't think Rashad Hill is very good, but he's a lot better than how awful Reef was uh, last Sunday. So hopefully Reef can take a week off, get healthy, and I think that would be the right decision for him. Uh, another big player that maybe is another game day time decision is Dalvin Cook. A limited participation on Tuesday. He did practice a little bit, so I would... I think we have a decent chance, maybe 75% chance he plays, but most likely it'll be more of a 50-50 split instead of he getting most of the carries. I think it'll be a lot of Murray, which is unfortunate because Murray's just a downhill runner right up the gut, and that's the strongest part of the Rams' defense. So uh, having that speed guy would be a very good sign for the Vikings to come on top. So Dalvin Cook being healthy is very, very important for this game. Uh, down, going down the list, Anthony Harris was limited in practice. Uh, Trey Waynes and Rashad Hill are on here as well, but they had full participation. They should be just fine. David Morgan, low-key, a very big injury in the Bills game. Notice how many uh, pass rushers got into us? You notice how we didn't have our best uh, blocking tight end in the game? Yeah, that ended up being pretty big for us. So uh, David Morgan being healthy is very good news. Limited in practice, so hopefully he does come out and play. Uh, Holton Hill and Elfine are on, on here with, with an ankle injury reported, but they had full participation both days. They should be just fine. And Tom Johnson was limited on Tuesday. I think he will be fine as well. Um, the Pat Elfine being healthy is very big news. Finally, we have our center. Hopefully it helps our offensive line, especially the running game. Our pass blocking has been bad, but our run blocking has been horrendous. So we need something to go right. I would love some Danny Isadora in at guard. Hopefully we would try something else, but hope we'll see it. We'll have to hope that elf line will be a pretty significant upgrade at center oh, over Brett Jones. So hopefully that will help out the Vikings quite a bit. So let's look into the keys of the game. And obviously, without Tlaib for sure, and probably Peters, our passing attack should be on 
fire. And when you, whenever you have a team full of free agency pickups, all these big money spendings, the depth is, isn't going to be as good. And their depth, surprisingly, is still all right. It's not just a, you have these studs, you get one hurt, and all of a sudden the whole team will fall apart. It's not too bad, but I don't. I think the Vikings should be able to tear apart their corners. Uh, Diggs and Thielen should have a very, very good day. Hopefully Treadwell can be in the action as well because we'll probably need him. Um, and Rudolph should have a pretty good chance as well because even their starting linebackers aren't very good. They do have two pretty solid safeties. So if we get a safety matchup on Rudolph, we probably won't win very much. But I really like his matchups on the tight end. Maybe David Morgan if he's healthy. Maybe even a little Tyler Conklin in, in there. Uh, so... I, I believe our passing attack should be fine. Of course, Dalvin, a uh, matchup on those linebackers, should have good games as well because he's been really good in the passing game and our run blocking hasn't helped him at all in the run game. So we need to get that going. And, of course, running the football will be extremely tough. Aaron Donald, Dominic and Sue may probably, not maybe, the best defensive tackle tandem in the NFL that can do so much. But I do think Sue's a little overrated. want your thoughts in the comments. But I think Richardson can do everything Sue can do. So I think we should be okay there. Uh, so with Donald and Sue, I don't want the Vikings to run up the middle. I, I love Elf Line, but I don't want to take him out head to head on Aaron Donald. No way. So let's run outside runs, maybe draws, get those tackles thinking that they're going to go straight to Kirk Cousins, hand the ball off, let Cook run right past them. If Cook isn't healthy, it really kind of sucks. I don't think Latavius Murray will be able to do much against him at all. Downhill running might set up the play action a little bit, but if we're getting two or three yards of carry, I want more than that. And we need to get an outside run game going. It might be a lot more Mike Boone if Cook is gone, because I want Mike Boone on those outside runs. That's a lot better than Latavius Murray. And we had to get a little bit of a screen game to contain their pass rush. And we need maybe a little wide receiver screens. Get the ball out of Cousins' hand fast. I would like the Vikings to start out in the game passing, loosen up their secondary. And then when they are in more of a nickel and dime package, run the rock. You need to get those numbers down because you're probably going to want to double team both Aaron Donald and Dominic and Sue if you're running up the middle and those iso plays will be extremely hard right up the gut but that might be what the Vikings will have to do with Latavius Murray so slants early on get those maybe one move and go routes over the top hopefully the wide receivers can win quickly and often and I think we'll have a good game offensively. Defensively Again, the Rams are great on both sides of the ball. This is why they're, by many people, thought of as the number one team in the NFL right now. So defensively for the Vikings, Sheldon Richardson going in there, getting in Goss' face. The pressure up the middle will be so critical because that will be the fastest way to get right in his face. And Neil Hunter will have to step up. Of course, no Everson Griffin. So Weatherly, who played well last week, and Tayshawn Bauer in his a backup role as well played well so this is a chance for those two to earn so to this is Weatherly and Tayshawn Bowers game to say hey Zimmer don't look at a uh, free agent D, uh, D end we got this we are just good by ourselves so this be a good game for them to show that they can do pretty good because the right side of their uh, offensive line the Rams isn't very good their left side is very solid the right side still a bit suspect so I think the Vikings need to take advantage of that uh, Sheldon Richardson up the middle Linval Joseph should be able to dominate some of their line as well going against ex-Viking center John Sullivan and Daniel Hunter will have to get some pressure off Wentworth on the left side as well uh, so the pressure up front will be big and of course that being uh, Todd Gurley, last year's MVP, will be very, very big. So, Anthony Barr, I'm looking at you. You have to have a good game this week. They love Gurley on screens. They love running outside with Gurley. And that's why Anthony Barr is supposed to be really good at defending. And if, so, if Anthony Barr is another bad game, it won't be good for the Vikings defense. Uh, if, if we hold Gurley to under 100 yards, we win. I, I don't think it's there's much more to it. If Gurley gets shut down, we win. It shouldn't even be that hard after that. Uh, their re receiver weapons are pretty good as well. They have three solid receivers. I don't think they have one. Uh, like Julio Jones, really, really good elite number one receiver. But Brandon Cooks, Cup, and Robert Woods are all very solid. Probably all three number two quality wide receivers. Uh, so it'll be tough to cover. 
of Trey Waynes being healthy would be really big. So I think he'd probably be our best matchup on Brandon Cooks as he has that speed over the top. And the other two underneath will probably get schemed open. They'll make some catches, but the Vikings will have to just swarm and tackle them. And we should be okay with that. So pressure up front. Stop them on first down lay run. We can't let them get the running game going because then they have that really deadly play action game. They'll throw it deep to Cooks. So if we can stop them on first down, get pressure on third down, we should be okay. And I think the Vikings have what it takes to do it. So even though we lost to the Bills, I'm going to be optimistic in this one. I'm going to say well, the Vikings will win a nail biter. 24-21. Give me your thoughts in the comments, and we'll see you guys in the next Josie Vikings video. See you guys then.